How's it going guys? So in this video, um, I want to talk about suspension geometry stuff and uh, we're mostly going to try to hit on why it's okay for drift cars to look like this and it's dumb for stance cars to look like this. Uh, a lot of big reasons for it is because um, the alignment changes when the wheel goes to angle. I'll, I'll show you guys on my car kind of how that works. And uh, yeah, the stance cars, it's completely unfunctionable and it makes the car just worse like it doesn't drive well so it's kind of for you know the kids who didn't get enough attention growing up but uh yeah so i'm gonna kind of show you guys exactly what happens when the wheel turns and why camera is important to have in a drift car especially with a lot of angle and just a disclaimer i am going to use my iphone level but i have found it to be like very accurate uh at my like fabrication school we were doing some tube bending stuff and we were checking the angles with like a protractor like a very accurate way and I was like, oh, I would, my, let me try using my iPhone level. Like, why not? I kind of did it as a joke at first, but so I set the tube down and I put it on there. It was spot on every single time throughout the whole day. So, I mean, even though it's off by like half a degree, it's, I already tried this and it still gets the idea of what I'm trying to show you guys. Like it still works, just the numbers are probably gonna might be a little different. And the car is in the air. So again, the numbers might be slightly different, but the, the concept of how they change is you're still gonna be able to see it. So let's go take a look at it. Really quick before I start showing you guys some measurements and stuff. I did a couple things to my suspension while I've been putting the engine back in because as you know, I took it out to change my um, input shaft seal since the CU9 is a huge transmission and it's not gonna come out without it being almost impossible to get back in. So I just pulled the engine because I do it in literally like two hours. And I took my LCAs off in the front and I cut and welded them um, uh, an inch and a half wider so I didn't have to use spacers anymore. So I take welded them all up nice and now there's like a lot more clearance for angle. Uh, I also got the extended or the extended tie rods that you need for this. They're like $8 on Rock Auto. I'll put a link in the description. They're like, it's like the EV455 Crown Vic tie rods and same thread and everything, but just two inches longer. So a lot of people have done this. Um, if you follow some of the other like FRS drift forums, but uh, yeah, it's the scrub radius is a lot less now and without the i guess the swing of the wheel uh there's there's more clearance because I, I really needed to run bigger tires and now i can so i'm gonna have to switch these out eventually all right so let's take a look at the wheel and what the camera does when we turn it so i don't have tie rods in so this is relatively straight it's about four five ish degrees uh well it's moving a little bit it changes depending on where it wants to sit straight but about four degrees, it's, or I guess five now. The case makes it hard, but um, like I said, this is just a reference so you guys can see. So this is really important to kind of like know where you need to set your camber because when the wheel starts to turn, so you can do this with one hand and you watch it, it starts to zero out. So when you get close, you basically want the wheel to be at zero camber when you're at your like optimal drifting angle or close to lock, but maybe not all the way. Cause uh, when you do drive like this, the wheel will kind of flop into place and sit sit there naturally. So obviously the car is not on the ground. So it's gonna, all the numbers are gonna be different. Like I said, um, I guess I could jack up the LCA kind of try to mimic it more accurately. But for now, you guys can see that uh, the camber changes a lot as it goes around. And you wanna have that completely flat contact patch during, uh, I guess, like I said, during the time where you're gonna sit at most for how much angle you have. So this also varies chassis to chassis. Everything's gonna be a little bit different. Um, my car, I usually have it set around, or I tried to have it set around negative four and a half to negative five degrees, and that would be pretty good. If you don't have a way to measure it for whatever reason, if you actually drive with it, you can feel when it wants to sit flat um, in drift. So I guess you could tell that way too if you need to, but I kind of wanted to experiment with this more. So I'm gonna put the jack under the rear wheel and we're gonna kind of see how the toe changes as it cycles up and down. Okay, so this one's a little harder to do while holding the camera. So I'm gonna kind of just read off the numbers as I go. Uh, and an easier way to do this if you really wanted to would be to take the spring out and then you can cycle your suspension up and down a lot better without having to really use a jack. Let's try and do this without lifting the car. So right now it's drooped. It's gonna have to move about three inches. And uh, I guess we could do toe. It's sitting at like about a degree, um, probably 
toe in. So as we go up, it's getting. Oh, this might not be the. Might be harder to do toe. It's getting more drastic. So. It's a little hard to tell. Like I said, I, I haven't even tried this one yet. I just tried the angle or the, the camera degree with more angle. Um, so I'm just kind of experimenting because I'm curious. But uh, yeah, so let's try the, the camera. So right now it's at a positive one degree. As we go up, it starts to get zeroed, which this is probably about where it sits normally. And then you keep going. Should be about like negative half to negative one. It's at negative one right now. So, well, wow. So the car is just starting to lift off the ground and it goes to a negative two degrees camber. So that's actually a lot more than I would like. I have a little, my tire wear is a little uneven. I actually, let me show you guys. So it might be kind of hard to tell, but the inside clearly wears a lot faster than the outside. It's been like this for quite a while. I just don't have the, um, the arms to adjust it. But now that I know this and I can play with it more, I could uh, eventually get the arms to be able to make these adjustments. And then probably where the car sits naturally, I would, I would, I would put a whole degree of positive camber in. And a lot of drift cars do this. If you notice, like it, it looks, you can, you can tell on a lot of them and it looks kind of weird, but in order to get that max amount of grip and full contact patch, that's usually where you have to set it. Um, so when the car does squat, it levels out and the whole tire is actually touching the ground. So that's something I've just kind of been playing with um, as I've been putting my car back together since I, I got the, I did the extended LCAs and stuff. I figured out the iPhone is a decently accurate uh, angle finder. So what would be really interesting is if uh, someone pulled off actually doing an alignment with it, like put like a straight bar on the side of the wheel and so the phone gets it nice and level. That'd be pretty cool if someone actually pulled that off. It'd be interesting to see if, if, it, if it's doable. But um, yeah, I do plan on getting toe plates though. So I'm, I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna do it for real. But yeah, uh, I just wanted to kind of show you guys that trick since um, it's like I said, it might not be perfect numbers, but it gives you a really good idea of what your suspension's doing. And you can kind of get in the ballpark of where you need to be before you actually start fine tuning adjustments just by having your phone out. So those of you who have been in the channel for a while, I'm gonna do kind of an update on what I've been doing to the car. It's almost back together. It's really just a time thing now because uh, I have everything I need. So uh, let me kind of show you. But going back to the extended LCAs and the eventual tie rods, those actually have to get here. Uh, an issue that people have that I might possibly run into is over centering, which is when the tie rod starts to extend a little too far and the ratio changes very drastically and it almost gets stuck at full lock. So um, what a lot of people do, this is also slightly chassis dependent, but what a lot of people do is they do rack offset spacers, which puts the tie rod in more so it doesn't have that like crazy angle coming in to where it's it's super shallow and then the ratio gets really extreme when it when it turns. I know other people who have done this and they haven't had that issue, but I do kind of have a backup plan if I do. Uh, I'm thinking about doing an S13 offset spacer because that's all there is and then just getting the right bolt and then obviously cut, doing the cut thing where it lines up with the little notches so it can't spin and putting the bolt in. And then uh, I would probably run S13 tie rods and I would just have to play with fitment of how it actually fits into the knuckle with the paper and everything. Which, I mean, they look the same. I don't see why it wouldn't, or at least be close. So it's kind of something I might want to play with later on, even if it does work fine, just because it will give the steering a little bit better geometry. And less stress on the rack, for somewhat. I'm more like less stress on the tie rod. It's probably a lot more stress on the rack because of the leverage. Into the engine bay. Obviously, like I said, it's just putting stuff back together. I don't know. I, I was going to mess with this and try to like cut these and replumb them to make it nice, but I think I'm just going to do braided stuff for everything and redo it another time. Just, I, this is like the one thing that looks really stupid right now and everything else is all nice and tucked away, so 
that's one thing. And then, oh yeah, back to the coilovers and like the whole angle kit stuff. So right now, the top hat, it's for like the camber adjustment, it's centered. <clears throat> and I think it's gonna sit right where I need it. Just kind of like, like where we talked about for the um, contact patch to be fully flat at the right spot in your, uh, when you're going to angle. So if it's, if it is and it's centered like this, I might actually flip the top hat and use use it for caster adjustment um, and get a little more self steer by moving the caster forward. Uh, just because the, the camera's already gonna be set. Because before there wasn't that much adjustment and I needed a lot. And I, I like I maxed out, it was only like negative three degrees and it would hit the, the contact patch like right there versus like a lot. Well, it, it did it pretty early when, when I was looking at it. So now I have more room for adjustment just from doing the LCAs like this, which it's also one of the reasons why I did it. All right, so it's kind of a short video. I just kind of wanted to show you guys that. I just thought it was cool. It, you can see these things, just do, and do it in your garage, kind of to adjust your alignment and get a ballpark of where you need to be. But uh, yeah, I should have the car back together soon and we'll do more driving videos. But that's it for now. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.